Children can be dismissed at Children's Church. Turn to Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. <clears throat> Beginning with verse 1. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered. We will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do what you like with them, but don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner, and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. Father, I'm here to be used by you. Speak to your people. Speak with clarity and simplicity, Father, so that we can receive your word and apply it to our lives. We know in the past you spoke in parables because of the people's lack of faith. But Father, we know without a shadow of a doubt that you will speak to us on this day with simplicity, power, and authority. Speak to your people. Use me. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Doors. Doorways. Open and closed doors. Doors mentioned in the Bible is a subject that can be quite intriguing. The terminology is used frequently among the community of believers. But do we truly understand the many facets of doors? Throughout the Bible, the word door or doors can be found beginning in the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelations. When making reference to the word door, the word gate is also used. In the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 7, we see sin crouching at the door of Cain. For Cain, to master the sin lurking at the entrance of his evil desires, he would have to give up his jealous anger so that sin would not find a foothold in the door of his life. And I'm reminded as I was reading and I was studying this, I saw the picture of somebody when they don't want you to close the door on, you, on them, they put their foot in the door. It's a foothold. And it prevents the door from closing. And the devil wants to put a foothold in the door of your life. He wants you to do the things that are displeasing to God. He wants to gain 
entrance into your hearts and into our minds. Sin is crouching at the doors of our lives today. And like Cain, we will be victims of sin if we do not master it. We cannot master sin, though, in our own strength. Instead, we must turn to God to receive the victory over the sin that is crouching at our door. Holy Spirit will help us master sins that wants to break down the door to our will to do what is right. This is going to be a lifelong battle. But we don't preach this enough in the church today. We don't preach about holy living enough today in the church today. We feel like just because we know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all our sins, it gives us the liberty to sin without a cost. Can I preach to you? Before we were saved, we had Christ standing at the entrance of our hearts, knocking, desiring to come in. Revelation 3.20 says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. In the beginning in the book of Genesis, we see sin was crouching at the door of Cain. And in the end, in the book of Revelations, we see Christ standing, not crouching at the door. Standing, not crouching at the door. Oh, that means a lot. Because crouching is a sneaky posture. Not wanting to be seen. He's crouching at your door. And if you have a, a peak hole, crouching would be hard for you to see who's on the other side of the door. But in Revelations, you see the Lord Jesus Christ standing because he wants to be seen. That is a bold posture. Wanting you to know that here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone opens up the door, I will come in. But he says, you have to volunteer to open up the door. In our text today, we will learn something about doors. The title of this afternoon's message is Beyond the Door. Beyond the Door. We do have a text. The text will be in Genesis chapter 19. And in our text, we will begin looking first at being outside the door. Verse 6 said that Lot went outside to meet them and he shut the door behind him. Wow. So if you're keeping notes, the first point would be outside the door, verse 6. Lot went outside the door of his house. Lot left the security. He left the security of his house. I don't know about y'all, but I got a wife that makes sure the doors are locked in the daytime, in the middle of the day, at night, and always asking me, did you check the doors? Are the doors locked? And when we get ready to go to bed and we put the alarm on, again, she says, did you check the doors? Are all the doors locked? And there have been times when I did not. And I said I did. And I thought I did. And when she goes down and sees that the door was not locked, she comes to me and say, that door was not locked. You're getting laxed because being behind the door locked is our security. Uh, <laughs> See, when Lot went outside the door of his house, he left the angels inside the house and he went into the world. He went into the world up against the demons of this world without the presence and protection of the Lord. Uh, when Holy Spirit says, I want Sister Sarah to pray. I said, okay, Lord. But then the devil started messing around and saying, well, maybe, maybe have someone else pray. Maybe have one of the kids pray. 
But Holy Spirit said, do what I told you to do. And when she started praying, one of the things she said was a hedge of protection. Holy Spirit said, you see, I'm here. And you know that I am talking to you to speak to my people. Oh, have your way, Holy Spirit. But Lot, shut the Lord's help inside and did not bring them out. Lot went into the world up against the demons of this world without the presence of the Lord's help. But because Lot belonged to God, he really couldn't shut the Lord out. He couldn't shut him in. Because the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord says, I will be with you always. In verse 6, Lot went outside the door to meet them. So I asked the question, who is them? Notice in verse 7 of our text, who is them? These men he called friends. They were a mob of perverts. Oh, y'all not I need a praying church up in here. Don't get scared. Devil don't, devil don't care nothing about it. Look at James chapter 4, verse 4. James chapter 4, verse 4. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means in, in, enemy against God. Consumed with the affairs of the world, such as worldly goods, endowments, riches, advantages, pleasures, which though hollow and fleeting, stirring up desires that seduce us away from God. They are obstacles to cause us to not live the life God has called us to live. This is the character of the men outside that door. In order to go outside the door, though, you, you have to open the door. And there's a lot of people in this world, Christian, opening doors that they shouldn't be opening. They say, hey, Lot, bring them boys out here so we can rape them. And they didn't have no good intent to even as to say they were gay, they, they were gay and they just liked the way they looked. They wanted to hurt them. Because if you read the text carefully, they say, who are these men to come to judge us? God had told Abraham, I'm going to destroy that wicked city. Word got out. And when these boys came into town, they said, these foreigners, these strangers, we don't know them. They came here to cause problems because they were get, they had a chance to repent because Ab God told Abraham, if you can find just one, I will save their land. Even Lot was not the one because he said he called them friends. They hung out together. He knew them. They knew him because they called him by his name. Hey, Lot, bring them boys out here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. The Lord will open doors for his people, though. God does open doors for us. He opened up the Red Sea for the Israelites when they left Egypt. He opened up the Jordan River to allow them to go into the promised land. And he has opened doors for every one of us. He opened the door of salvation. He said, I am the door. I am the way to the Father. No one comes unto the Father but by me. You must come through this door.
I don't know who's more perverted. A lot of those guys outside that wanted to have sex with the men. For your daughters that are innocent? And tell, you can do anything with them? That's how the world is. It tells you you can do anything you want to do. We're going to get into that. Anything. You come out of the hedge of God's protection, you can have a good time. These so-called friends were a mob of perverts. And we cannot compromise with perversion. We cannot compromise with the world. Lot was compromising with those outside the doors of his house. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. <laughs> I'm getting a healing because stuff is coming up. So y'all bear with me as I was praying during the altar call for a healing. Because I had some stuff around my heart. Made it feel like I was in a bad place with my heart. But that's this cold and phlegm around my heart that's coming up. Amen. I'm glad y'all said amen and agreed with me. Six, Second Corinthians 6, verse 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do, unri- what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Baal? Or what does a believer have in common with the unbeliever? What argument is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. The Apostle Paul, when he wrote this letter, He's urging believers not to be yoked together with unbelievers. He is warning the church against forming binding relationships with unbelievers because this might weaken your commitment and and integrity and standards for the Lord. As they say, the world say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. The world is saying the same thing. Uh, When in the world. Do as the world do. It's all right. Paul also explained in other letters to the church that he did not want the church to isolate themselves from unbelievers. He even urged believers, women, to stay with their unbelieving spouses. But however, Lot, he began reasoning with these outsiders, pleaded the law of hospitality and the protection of his guests, In his house, which they were entitled to, his protection. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ should not compromise with the world. Amen? The world says it's okay to have sex outside of marriage. Don't compromise. The world says it's okay for men to have sex with another man and get married. Don't compromise. The world says that it's okay for two women to get together. Don't compromise. The world says as long as you're not hurting anybody, you can do whatever you want to do. Don't compromise. The world says everybody's doing it. It's okay. Don't compromise. The world says a man is going to be a man. He's going to have more than one woman. Don't compromise. That's a lie straight from hell. But the world allows men and women to compromise their marriage relationship. They invite other people in their marriage. I think it's called open marriage or something like open relationship or something like that. That's the world. And it's funny because I be watching um, divorce court and they have a nerve to be in front of a judge talking about, well, we have an open relationship and we got rules. And, 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 and he or she broke the rule. I think Will Smith and Jada, Jada Pickett, whatever her name is, they have rules. Entanglement. Yeah, you was entangled by the devil. Now my wife come up here and talk about, we're going to bring Robert over. I don't say, Robert who? 
<laughs> What's he going to do, the plumbing? I ain't talking about that kind of plumbing. Move on, faith. The world says, drink, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Only God knows when we're going to die. He knows exactly when. And the Bible says that we should cry when a baby is born and rejoice when a believer in Christ leave this earth because they're returning to the Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Holy Spirit gives us the power and understanding to live according to his will and do good. Look at Titus chapter 2 verse 11. It teaches us to say no, no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, standing, and not crouching, uh-huh. standing upright and living godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do, eager to do, eager to do what is good. Sometimes my brothers and sisters are struggling with a sin And I tell them to read James chapter 1 because it tells me count it all joy when you're being tempted. Because God does not tempt, but he tests. And when you pass the test, there is a reward for you. God says, "Uh, you're getting ready to go on a test. I know you know it's a test. Pass the test so I can reward you. But if you don't read your word and you you come, you're being attacked by a temptation, you begin to start doubting yourself instead of knowing that, hmm, I'm a bad mamma jamma because the devil is getting ready to get whooped and I'm going to receive a reward because I'm going to pass this test. I'm going to pass this test. There may be a gentleman in here right now when you're at work. It seems like soon, soon as a certain time comes, she comes by. It's a test. Mm-hmm. You got to know when the test is there. And all of a sudden, when she sees that you're ignoring her, the test gets a little harder. It comes a little closer. And then they begin to, can, can you help me? You, you, you hear where I'm coming from? Can you help me? Y'all hear where I'm coming from? Can you, can you help me? It's a test. And when that test comes, you stand up. You stand up and want to be seen. You don't crouch to see. Ah, I'm going to preach to you. You don't crouch to see, but you stand up and be bold and let them see that you are a righteous man, that you are going to do what's right, and you will not fail the test. Oh, I I worked in surgery where they had the scrubs and they kind of loose. And when they bend down in front of you, then you know what the devil's trying to make you do. Lust. Look. And it's funny, I could be in my car and it could be a young lady on the bus bench. And if you just happen to look over there, it's like their eyes meet your eyes. It's like I knew you were going to look. Can I preach to you? Woo-hoo-hoo! So I pass the test. I keep it, keep it going. But it's funny how women, they don't need to turn their head. My, <laughs> they can be looking straight ahead, but they looking right over there. Men, we don't do that. We got to. But they can just be, they can tell everything, plaid shirt, <laughs> brown shoes. Yeah, Rolex. 
Uh-huh. I see you got it, sister. You know what I'm talking about. Secondly, behind the door, verse 9 of our text. Turn there real quickly. Verse 9 of our text. We got to start living holy again. I ain't trying to tell you to, to don't do your hair and don't put no makeup on and wear a dress that covers your shoes and they don't even see your shoes. I'm not talking about that kind of holiness. I'm talking about separation. People know that you belong to God. That's all I'm saying. Many of you buy nice clothes and you like to wear nice clothes. There's nothing wrong with that. But represent our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 9 of our text, look what it says. Get out of our way, they replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. The devil will keep bringing that pressure. Keep bringing that pressure. They wanted to break down the door. This perverted people wanted was, they wanted what was behind the door, the two angels of the Lord. And remember, he knew they were angels. Lot knew they were angels. It wasn't just, just, just a regular human being. He knew they were angels. He bowed down to them and his face to the ground, worshiping the Lord's uh, 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 angels. So I don't understand why he thought that he could protect them when these are cherubim angels, mighty angels that don't need nobody to protect them. They came to bring wrath on a wicked city, just the two of them. They said, we're coming here to take care of some business. Even when he said, come to my house, I said, no, we, we cool. We, we stay out in the square. I know why they wanted to stay out in the square. See if they can find one. See if they can find one. Because the Lord is gracious like that. It is the Lord who fight our battles. The battle's not ours. The Lord is our protector. So why do we shut them out? Why do we don't pray? See, when you don't pray, you shut them out. You shut them in. You keep them in and act like you can take care of business yourself. And they said, get out the way. That's what the devil said. Get out my way. You coming up here in your flesh. Who are you? Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? That's what they say. Psalms 17, 8 helps us to understand God's protection. It reads, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who assail me, from mortal enemies who surround me. Just as the body is designed to protect the pupils of our eyes from anything coming towards it, God protects us the same way. It's like an eyelash. As soon as something comes our way, dangerous, God says, he blinks. You ever get a piece of hair in your eye or, or a gnat fly in your eye or dust get in your eye? I said, angels, go before me. They want you. And then look through your peak hole to see what was going to happen. Uh -huh. You don't have to worry about nothing. Just call upon the name of the Lord and ye shall be saved. Trust that God got your back. Uh -huh. The shadow of your wings in this psalm is a figure of speech that symbolizes God's protection. He guards us as as a mother bird protects her young by covering them with her wings. That's like the Lord saying, I, I cover you. The devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. These men and boys came to steal, kill, and destroy. The only way the devil can affect us is when we are outside the door, outside God's heads of protection. 
As long as you stay in the hedge, the devil can't do nothing to you. He removed the hedge from Job so that he could be attacked. But he said, but don't, don't kill him. Be careful. Don't kill him. Y'all don't understand the devil. He's a liar. Well, he won't do that. You read your Bible. Well, I won't, I won't kill him. And what did he do? Try to kill But Jesus said, but I come to give you life and life more abundant. Don't shut me in. Let me fight your battles. Stay in the hedge. I'll go out there and deal with these guys. Oh, man. The devil has come to steal your joy, your family, your peace, your finances. He has come to violate us by raping us taking what does not belong to him without consent. But if you give him consent, he's going to rape you. When you give him an inch, he's going to take a yard. When you open the door a little bit, he's going to stick his foot in there. You ain't going to be able to close it. The devil wants to kill us. The devil wants to kill our self-esteem and kill our dreams. The devil sees your door. When the devil sees your door is weak, he will break it down. A pressured lot. You know, I know I'm not the only one. You all know that you are under pressure when the devil comes to try to make you sin. Don't fight him in your own strength. Stay in the hedge. Call to that devil and say, I'm in the hedge. That's what Lot should have said. When they were calling out the Lot, he should have been behind that door saying, leave us alone. But what did he do? Open the door. Close right behind him. If anything, I would have said, come on, guys, let's go out there. Let us, it was two of them in Lot. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, let us go out there and deal with them. Let us be on one accord. We got to be on one accord. (laughs) Finally, we come to our last point, the closed door. Look at verse 10 and 11. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness so that they could not find the door. (laughs) 11, verse 11. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness so that they could not find the door. Holy Spirit showed me something very interesting, and I just was blessed by it. Turn to Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Oh, you're so good. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for the letter to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any there who belongs to the way, whether men or women, he might take them uh, as prisoners uh, to, uh, uh, into Jerusalem. Uh, 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 verse 4. Yeah, go to verse 4. He fell to the ground. I'm sorry. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and I will be uh, and I will tell you what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see. He was blind. Why was he blind? Because he allowed the devil to attack 
God's people. The same thing he did to those men that were outside of Lot's house. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, mm, wisdom, mm -hmm, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measures, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. If you cannot see the devil coming, you blind. And you are in trouble because you can't see your way out. I was once blind, but now I see. I see demons. I see them coming. And I know what to do when they come to my door. Stay behind the door and let the Lord fight my battle. My brothers and sisters, there may be someone here this afternoon who is blind. Ask God to remove the blindness as he did the Apostle Paul so that you could see the door and come in. Jesus said, I am the door. John 10, 7, 9, verily, verily, truly, I tell you, I am the door for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They come in and come out and find pasture. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I come through his door. The door to salvation is essential for a man to go through. This is the only way a man can be saved. Today, Jesus Christ wants to close some doors in your lives, doors of the past, anything associated with wickedness. Allow Holy Spirit to close those doors once and for all. Allow Holy Spirit to close the door that leads to anger. Leave it on the outside. Allow Holy Spirit to snatch you inside and close that door for good. He wants to close the doors to a lying spirit, hate, lustful spirits, spirit of laziness, suicide, drug and alcohol addiction. Jesus wants to close the door of a judgmental spirit. There is someone here today who has never allowed Holy Spirit to close those doors. To those demons of the past, they continue to attack you with the sins of your past. Today, allow Holy Spirit to close that door of unforgiveness. How do you close the door? You must have faith. You must have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow him to close the door of whatever the world system is trying to overcome you with. Beyond the door, outside the door, inside the door. And our last point, closed doors. If Lot would have kept that door closed, he wouldn't have had to deal 
with those perverted young men and old men. But he would have been able to see the mighty hand of God at work immediately because them angels showed him, this is what we do. Let God show you what he can do. Faith without works is dead. You just got to trust him. You got to trust him. You can't try to do things on your own strength like Lot did, compromising. Don't compromise. Do what God does. Trust God, and you will be an overcomer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word. We thank you that you have blessed us to show us that you got us, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. We just have to continue to trust you and stay in the hedge that you have provided for us. Because we are your sheep and you protect us. Because your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Let us not lean on our own understanding, but trust in you in all your ways. Deliver us from the evil one, Lord. Because we know that the adversary is relentless. And he will pressure us to try to make us turn our backs on you. To go back into the world. As Lot went into the world to his friends, his so-called friends. Let us not entertain being friends to the world again, but let us continue. As you told us last Sunday, we have friends in high places. Let us depend on those friends, the Solomons, the Moses, the Abrahams, the Christ, the disciples, the apostles. Let us trust those friends. And continue to, to, to read a proverb every day, Lord, to get the wisdom that Solomon was given from, by you, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in us and through us. Let us continue to enjoy the rest of our day. Thank you for the healing, Lord. Thank you for the healing. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. I want to know you. I want know you. I want to know you for who you really are. I want to